Shalom, brothers and sisters. So I had to jump on and get something out in the chaos that's happening. And um, my daughter that's been sick and the storm's raging and it's just chaos on the side. But I've been meaning to unpack this one and I'm going to make a follow-up video in the next few days unpacking it even deeper, even though by then it will be over. But just because it is today, we're six hours ahead of you in America and you guys are waking up to this today and today will be a big thing for this. I'm going to touch on just a few important things that I want you to consider as a child of God going into Halloween. So firstly, clearly evil is not something that any Christian should choose to be associated with. Uh, let alone glorifying it, making a big thing about it. For the face of the Lord is always against those who do evil. I am very anti-Halloween. I also have strong opinions on Christmas and Easter and those things that we can get into at a later stage. But specifically, I am very against Halloween. And we'll cover all the angles here as well, just quickly as much as I can in this important video, just to guide you through the day with my humble opinion based on the Word of God. So 1 Peter 3 verse 12, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. They might be saying, yeah, but they're not doing evil. They're walking around with their kids and it's almost a community fun thing and it's trick or treating and celebrating evil things and evil cultures and evil history. It's evil. Psalm 34 verse 12 to 16 says, Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to blot out their name from the earth. God's got a very strong opinion on righteousness and evil, good and bad, light and dark. There is no gray middle median line that we can walk so that we can have the best of both worlds. You're one or the other, fire or ice, light or dark, right or wrong. Paul raises the bar even higher. With his exhortation to abstain from every form of evil in 1 Thessalonians 5.22. From everything that is against life, especially eternal life. And abstain from all appearance of evil. What do you think it is when you partake in Halloween? You know its roots, even though people are trying to con you into different reasons for why it's there. And people are dressing up as monsters and witches and warlocks and demons and all sorts of horrifying things, celebrating evil. Are you abstaining from all appearance of evil by partaking in this whole thing that's going on? The devil's laughing. He's rolling around on the ground laughing at how many churches and Christians are happily partaking of Halloween. And he sees it as a victory and a feather in his cap. It is evident that the rituals of Halloween are evil, ancient and modern. And again, I'm going to make a longer video where I'll unpack it for you in all of its gory history. It doesn't promote life. It revels in trickery, sorcery, spiritism, and many dark ways of the evil one. Christians should not be involved in this at all. Paul said to the Corinthians, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 21. Choose. Choose whose side you're on. You can't do evil or even partake with evil and still want to be part of God and partake with God. A house divided against itself shall fall. That is not how things work. You choose where you stand. This current world we're living in is a battleground. Which side are you on? There is no middle ground that's safe. You've picked a side. Pick one. Stand by that choice. Make a difference in the time when the world needs it most. Adam Clark uh, did a lot of great writings and things. He said the following, which really sums it up for me beautifully. Sin not and avoid even the appearance of it. 
do not drive your morality so near the bounds of evil as to lead even weak persons to believe that you can actually touch, taste, or handle it. Let not the form of it, eidos in Greek, appear with or among you, much less the substance. You are called to holiness. Be ye holy, for God is holy. What people don't think of with this whole issue with Halloween and things like this that are evil. If you, even for good reasons supposedly, and I'll touch on this just now, are part of it or trying to make a difference in it. Those brothers or sisters that come, have been freed from those backgrounds, see this and they can fall back. They can be called back to where they came from. You don't drink alcohol in front of a former alcoholic because you will cause him to stumble. These are things you don't place to stumble in front of your brothers and sisters who have already won and come out of bondage into victory. Now you want to show them that you can dabble in darkness and be okay when not everyone is able to do that. So again, stay away. Don't let people see you be any part of this evil. Ephesians 5 verse 7 to 15 says, Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Partakers, as in any part of it. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them, which is what I'm doing now. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then, you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Redeem the time, there isn't a lot of it, and the days are dark and evil right now. <clears throat> so, a lot of Christians will say, and I've seen pastors in America with huge channels on YouTube and everything saying, no, we're going to do the Halloween thing. We bought chocolates. We're going to have our people out in the parking lot. We're going to do the trick-or-treating thing, and we're going to tell them about Jesus while we partake of this whole thing. Everyone's going to dress up. You're partaking. You're not making a difference for evangelism that way. Have no part of it. So then how can I do anything evangelistic then, Pastor? Easy, easy. They come past your house and knock, because they will. And when they knock and you open the door, because you don't not open your door for trick and treating, tell them about Jesus. Hand them a Bible. Give them some gospel tracts. Tell them how short the time is. Invite them in for a Bible study or a prayer session. And tell them that you'd like to share with them the wonderful story of Jesus Christ and how he died for them to be set free from darkness and brought into light. There's your evangelistic opportunity. You don't have to partake in anything else. They want something given to them. Great. Give them a Bible. Give them the word of God. Give them something that will lead them to life. Don't partake in their ritual. If you want a really good example. Of how bad this ends. When you think you can gently partake. To make a difference and things like that. Catholic Church. How many things did the Catholic Church bring into their church to save the pagan and make them part of it? They took pagan holidays and made it God's holidays. They set the dates on the dates of ancient pagan holidays. They brought pagan things into the church. They did all sorts of things to the point now where they can pray to saints and they can pray to Mary. And we know that the word of God says there is no way. There is only one name by which men will be saved and only one who can hear you. God. You can't pray to anyone who's lived and been alive and gone. Because once you are dead, absent from the body, present with eternity, you're done. 
You ain't chatting with your family. You aren't interceding for them in the afterlife. None of that stuff is scriptural or based on truth. Now, where did all this error come from besides being put there on purpose? From incorporating darkness into light all the time. So much so that it is now seen as this is the light, but it's not. It's a pot of skittles of different colors that is unholy. That you have to sift through carefully to try and find the light. And that is not good. And it's one of the biggest church institutions in the world, if not the biggest. How many people claim to be Catholic? So, again, there are a lot of good Catholics that hold on to Jesus Christ and the truth. But the church as a whole has destroyed itself and brought itself to the point where Pope Francis, a very good false prophet candidate, is showing the world exactly what that church has become. He's doing a great job. And it started with incorporating darkness into light. Stay away from Halloween. Do not think you're making a difference by getting involved, dressing up, handing out chocolates and sweets, and doing their thing so that you might have an opportunity. Let them come to you and knock. Tell them about Jesus. Don't dress up as dead things and superheroes and all sorts of things. Wear a Jesus t-shirt. Tell them about God. Instead of handing out sweets and things that support their holiday, hand out Bibles and tracts. Tell them about God Most High and their opportunity at eternal life. Share the news about the end of the world and everything that's going on around you. One of two things is going to happen. You're going to have God appointments at your front door. Or well, they're going to run because darkness does not abide the light. The time to stand for truth and light and what is right is now. It is not the time to try and argue for the incorporation of those things. Because then it would be easier for you to join the Catholic Church and take these things on board and find explanations as to why evil is good and can be accepted. But that is not what I will be pushing or explaining or talking about because I stand for Jesus Christ because very, very shortly, possibly minutes or days, I should be standing in front of him. And I want to be able to explain that I did it his way, not my way. Stand for light. Be the salt and the light. Don't be part of the darkness. God bless Again, I will make a longer video giving you the full breakdown on Halloween in the next few days. Shalom.